Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be doing another game in my series on the coin multi-pack The British Way from GMT Games, designed by Steven Rangazis, uh, development by Joe Dewhurst. This is uh, going to be a play example, which we'll use the play example in the rule book for the, uh, the Kenya game inside the multi-pack. If you're unfamiliar, there are four games in this uh, multi-pack covering the end of Empire for the British uh, in the immediate aftermath or the, ne the, last, the next 15 or so years after the Second World War. Uh, they're, they're dealing with counterinsurgencies in Palestine, Malaya, Kenya, and Cyprus. So I've already done a, sol a solitaire playthrough of Palestine, and I did a play example for Malaya. I'm going to do one here for Kenya, and I will do another one for Cyprus, uh, just so that everybody can get a look at all four of the games in the multi-pack, and, um, you know, see if it's for them, and so on and so forth. Uh, for my part, I've, I've enjoyed uh, both of the first two games, and looking forward to getting into Kenya. So... Um, you know, I know that from a video standpoint, uh, you know, people get, you know, uh, worn out maybe is the right word. Um, if you if you stick with one game for too long. The nice thing about this is this is, in fact, four different games. They all have obviously some common elements um, and they all come in one box. So that's that's pretty nice. Uh, you get a lot of gaming in this one box with the four games, uh, in my opinion. Uh, they're all two player games, which most of the coin games are not. The only uh, so-called, well, I was going to say so-called full game, but let's just say the previous editions in the series, the only one that's really two-player is um, Colonial Twilight, which covers the French in Algeria. Uh, all of the other ones are more than three or more players, and, um, you know, a lot of people look and enjoy the, uh, you know, say the four-player games. For example, games like um, Cuba Libre or Fire in the Lake, etc. And, and there are, I think, 10 or 11 games with several more on the way. And there is actually another multi-pack coming as well. Another four-pack also developed by um, or designed by Steven Rangazis. Uh, it'll have the same team. I believe Joe Dewhurst will be doing the development again. Um, those guys did a did a fantastic job. The the rule books each rule book has some nice historical flavor uh, information on all the cards. So uh, there's a lot of uh, information on here, which is probably good because there isn't, you know, these are lesser known counterinsurgencies. Maybe would be one way to look at it. Um, so it's always good to uh, to play a game that will teach you something as well. That's at least in my opinion. Anyway, so I'm going to get into this, and I, I don't want to preamble too long, but I did just kind of want to give you guys an introduction to uh, to this one. This will be the uh, the British, as usual, and the insurgents are the Mau Mau. And, um, yeah, we'll talk about, about that and go through the, the play example here in a moment. Okay, so a couple of things to, uh, I think, are worth mentioning here with this one is we have two Two things basically that are a little different from the previous games. Uh, one is that down here we have a pipeline track and this basically models how repressive or brutal the British were um, during the war because at one, at, you know, at, some, at one point they actually got to the point of you know having basically gulags, concentration camps, etc. Um, you know, so definitely not Definitely not something of which the British are probably proud or should be proud for that matter. But, um, you know, realistic uh, kind of dr draconian, you know, uh, measures that took place in Kenya during this uh, during this emergency, as they would call it. The Mau Mau are uh, or as they were as they would prefer to have been known, they were the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army, the KLAF. Uh, but they were known as the Mau Mau. They were pretty much, um, they didn't have a lot of weaponry. So they, a lot of their, um, they, they won't be able to attack, which is a common thing for insurgents in the coin series. But in this game, they are un unable to do that. They remove uh, police via terror. 
So they were very, um, they, they did their, their fair share of brutal acts as well. Um, this was one where you didn't really have a good guy, bad guy situation. Both sides did some uh, incredibly uh, nasty things. And um, yeah, so, you know, that's, like I said, you know, being able to uh, read some of the detail on the situation historically is, is, uh, is really great for background and learning something new about something that maybe you didn't know a whole lot about, you know, um, as far as the situation went. So having said that, we're going to go through, uh, go through a turn or a campaign rather. And so we'll draw our first card. I mean, it works pretty much the same way in every game, right? You play a card in all four of these games. You only play one card, not two, which is the, which is, you know, common, more common in coin games. So this one is one mile strip. So we have two events, British event and the insurgent event. So the British would be con contain gorillas to forest. Remove one base and one political will from a mountain jungle with British pieces in every adjacent space. And then the, uh, the Mau Mau have the population removal resented, which sets a reserve province to resistance. So you might see here on the map, we have several provinces that have an R after them eh, beside their name. Though, and they're actually colored in, um, in black as well. So we have Maru, Embu, Nairi, Fort Hall, and Kiambu. They are all reserve provinces. So the reserve provinces represent the Kikuyu, Embu, and Meru reserves established by the colonial government. And so the populated non-reserve represent uh, the white highlands where Kikuyu worked as laborers but were dominated by a small, small population of white settlers. And then you have your two mountainous uh, provinces, Mount Kenya and Abadares, which you can see their population box says zero. They have no population, therefore they don't add anything uh, to either side. You can see uh, Ni Nairobi is here. That's the only city in here. So you have Nairobi and then you have the basically the white settlement provinces kind of heat from Nan Nanyuki around. And then we have our reserve provinces and our two mountainous provinces. So that's kind of the layout of the map. So the Mau Mau will go first and the Mau Mau are going to do a full operation and they are going to do the terror operation and combine it with an oath special activity. So here's their card. So terror, build resistance and remove police. Any spaces with underground gorillas. One resource per space selected. In each selected space, activate one underground gorilla. Then either place one terror marker, if none, and shift the space once toward resistance or remove two police cubes. Okay, and then the oath, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a moment. They are going to select uh, four provinces for this. And you might notice that they have a resource marker, but the British do not. The British do have their typical political will marker, which, as always, if it gets down to the, to the bottom three here, the Mau Mau win. If it gets up to the top three, the British win. Right? So... They're going to do four, and we can mark them with pawns like we've done uh, in the past. So they are going to do Embu, Fort Hall, uh, Kiambu, and Meru. Okay, so kind of in a line here, right? So they're going to pay four resources for that, brings them down to four. Then they have to activate their gorillas. So we're going to flip all these guys over. And so now they can choose to either place a terror marker and shift the space towards resistance or remove up to two police cubes. As you can see, there are no police cubes in these. These are all already under Mau Mau control. So they will be uh, placing a terror marker and shifting each space from neutral to resistance. Okay, so we'll put some terror markers down. We need four of them, so we get one, two, three, four. And then we get resistance markers as well. We get one, two, three, four. Okay, so now I can remove these guys. 
Now they can uh, also select one populated reserve province with an underground gorilla for their oath special activity, which builds resistance and places gorillas can, go, can be used with any of their three operations. Again, they don't have an attack operation. So a populated reserve province with an underground gorilla shift the space once toward resistance and place up to one gorilla. So the only place they can do that is Nairi because the, the other ones, the other reserve provinces, they already have an active gorilla. So they got to flip this guy over. Oh, wait, they don't flip them over. They just get a new one. Get a new one. And they put a resist here as well. And that ends their turn. And now the British get to go. So they can choose from the event or a limited operation. So they will go with a limited operation. And they're going to go with the deploy operation, which is up here. And we've seen this before in the other games. They kind of, it's kind of, this, kind of similar. They're going to place cubes and reposition troops. So it can be in Niobe or any of their controlled provinces. In each space selected, place up to two cubes for the police. Or if Nairobi, place up to four cubes that can be troops and or police. Then may move any troops to one non-mountain jungle space, even if the operation is limited. So they can do it in one place and they can also move troops to one space as well. So that is how that one works. So they're going to take their four troops that they have here in their available box and they're going to place them in Nairobi. And then they're going to move all six of the troops in Nairobi to Nairi. So all six of these guys are going to go head out to Nairi. So that is going to replace the Mau Mau control with British control. It increases their political will by two because you use the population of the province. So it goes up to 14, and that is the end of the British turn. And now, so we will reset this, which means pulling these down. British will become first eligible. The Mau Mau will become second eligible. And we go on to the second card. So we're going to draw our next card, and this is the Kenya Land and Freedom Army, which was the name of the Mau Mau. That was the name they, they gave themselves. So the British event would be hungry and desperate. The Mau Mau no longer... Free rally during the redeploy phase. That's kind of nice. Uh, the Mau Mau capability would be to evade the British and raid may select up to two spaces. So this is actually not a bad one. Um, one of the things I've noticed in playing this, this multi-pack is that the events get played not all that often because uh, with the short uh, kind of frenetic pace of the game, you feel, uh, you feel pressure as the player, I believe, anyway, to kind of do things. So you want to run ops, basically. So in this case, the British are the first eligible, and they're going to do, like I said, an op. They're going to do the full op and an airstrike. So we're going to go full op, and they're going to do a sweep and an airstrike. So sweep and airstrike. So it'll allow us to move troops and activate guerrillas in any space. They move any troops into an adjacent destination space, then activate one gorilla cube, one gorilla per cube in each destination, or in mountain jungles, one for every two cubes. Okay, so our legend is over here. So you can see the white name is a non-reserved province. The black name is the reserved provinces, which also have an R. The dark green is mountain jungle, and our, our hashed green here is the out-of-play areas. So these would be out-of-air, you know, play areas not in play, right? Pretty straightforward. And then of course, Nairobi. So uh, the British actually don't have to pay operations cost. They just get to do their thing. It's good to be the empire sometimes. So they are going to select Abudares. So we'll put a, they're going to select Nairobi. They're going to select uh, Nieri. They're going to select Mount Kenya. So these are the four areas they're going to do. Move four troops each into Abadares and Mount Kenya. Two from Rift Valley and the Nyeri. So two from here. Those two there. And then two from Nyeri into Mount Kenya. The other two from 
on Yuki here because they have to be adjacent. So these two sent two in here and these, this one and this one sent two in there. This is going to flip control here back to uh, uncontrolled because we have a tie. But we don't adjust political will because that only moves when control flips. So when the Mau Mau, if the Mau Mau take this again, then it would move. But it's not going to move because it's uncontrolled. They're going to gain control in these two spots, but... Because the population is zero, that is not, that is also not going to move our political will. Now they can activate one underground gorilla for each cube in a destination space. Or, so that would be like here and here. But in these two, they can only activate one for every two. So this is going to activate, this is going to activate both of these guys. This guy, this guy, and whoops, getting away, run, this guy. Next, they can select any province or mountain jungle for an airstrike, removing one active gorilla there, or up to two in a mountain jungle. They will select Nairi and remove one gorilla. Um, so here, let's just take a look at the airstrike, right? Remove active gorillas any accompanying op, any province or mountain jungle, remove one active gorilla, or if mountain jungle, remove up to two active gorillas, which is what I just read. So they're going to go here. They're going to take this guy out. He goes back to the available force pool. This, again, becomes British control. And again, the control didn't... It didn't change. We're not moving that because it, they, they lost control and regained it, basically. So that is a net change of zero. So the British turn is now complete. And now the Mau Mau get to choose between an event or a limited operation. Now, as I mentioned, the event in this on this card, Mau Mau capability, the, uh, that lets them uh, evade the British and they can select up to two spaces for raid. They're going to actually use that. So they're going to use this, which means this goes here. So the Kenya land and... Freedom Army is a capability event that will have a lasting effect. So we place it by the side of the board. So I'm going to place it over here. Put it right there uh, so that we remember that it is available to them. Let me take these guys off the board. And we're going to put a capability marker on it. To indicate that that capability is active. Now we reset again. Mau Mau first eligible, British second, and we draw our next card. Kenya Police Reserve. Settler Police. Place one police from anywhere, even out of play. You'll see here there's eight police cubes out of play currently. Into each non-reserve province and vigilante counter-terror for the, for the Mau Mau. Remove one gorilla in each non-reserve province to set it to resistance. Okay. So the Mau Mau get to go first, and they're going to do a rally operation with the supply special activity. So they're going, they're going for the whole boat, the full turn, as they say. So they're going to do a rally and a supply. So rally places gorillas and bases in any reserve province with, and any other space that doesn't have loyalty. One resource per space is the cost, and they get to place one gorilla or replace two with a base. And if a base instead place gorillas up to population plus bases or flip any gorillas there underground. Now the supply will let them gain resources. It goes with any op. So all of these are any op basically on the Mau Mau side. The British are still a little limited on what they can do. Okay, so that's, um, they're going to gain a resource for each base in Nairobi plus one for resource for each other base connected to Nairobi by a path of intervening spaces with either a gorilla or resistance. So basically, you're here, so you can take a path and go up, and as long as you have a gorilla or a resist, you're going to get a resource point. So this one's obviously zero. They don't control it. But if you go up this way, you're going to get, you're going to get whoops, resources for all these spots here. So they're going to go all full, they're going to spend all four of their remaining resources. They're going to do Nairobi. Mount Kenya, Abadares, 
and Thompson's Falls up here. So in Thompson's Falls, they're going to place one gorilla that's going to remove British control. Okay, so we're going to remove this because this one's done. They're even, so uncontrolled. Okay, Mount Kenya, they can place, um, they have a base, so they can place the um, gorillas up to the number of population plus the base. So that would be one in this case because the population there is zero. So they get one here. The same will be true in Abadares. So we're going to place one here as well. And they still stay in British control. And then Nairobi is where they really get to strike hard because they've got two population plus a base. That means they can place three. So they're going to place three in here. And they now have four, which allows them to take control. And they now control that. And that reduces political will by two because it's two population. So that was a good turn for the Mau Mau. So now they can, uh, they can pause their rally operation to perform supply and gain more resources. So supply gains one resource for each base in Nairobi plus one for every other base that's connected by a path of spaces with either a resistance or guerrilla. And this includes Abadares and Mount Kenya for a total of three resources because it's based on bases. So this base is connected to Nairobi and that base is connected to Nairobi by the path, as I mentioned before. So their resources went to zero and now it goes up to three. And they're going to use one of these to do uh, to do a uh, they're going to do another rally action here, which will place their last gorilla in Nairi, which will remove British control. And again, it doesn't flip; it just is uncontrolled. So it's now British turn. They're going to elect to actually pass. So I'm just going to move them here and say they're going to pass. Now, when the British pass, they can adjust the pipeline track. When the Mau Mau pass, they can gain a resource. So the British are going to move this to villagization from emergency powers. Okay, so now um, if the pipeline is greater than one, we roll for outrage when conducting reprisal or relocate, and we reduce political will by one if the roll is lower than the pipeline value. So the pipeline value is now two. So if we roll a die, when we if we do a reprisal or relocate, we have to roll a die. If we roll a one, in that case, that would reduce political will by one. And as we go up the chain here and become a little, you know, more and more brutal, for lack of a better word, it's going to be easier to make roles that are going to lower the political will. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a risk reward situation here for the British. So this allows them to do reprisal and relocate under emergency powers. They could reprisal max one space, but not relocate. So this get, gives them another tool in their belt, so to speak, another operation that they can do the relocate operation right there. Okay, so that's going to reset. The British go to first eligible, Mau Mau to second, pull our next card, McLean inquiry. Officers held accountable, increase political will by two, and shift the pipeline one step to the left. For the Mau Mau atrocities continue, roll for outrage, but lower political will by two if the result is less than the pipeline value. In this case, I'm pretty sure neither side is going to want to play that event. So the British go first. They are going to do an assault operation and a reprisal. So we're going to see reprisal for the first time. So I'm going to move this up. Now they're going to do a assault first, which we've seen before, but, you know, in the other games. So they're going to eliminate Mau Mau forces, spaces with cubes, and active pieces. So they have to be active. That's a key part. Proceed to remove one active Mau Mau piece per troop or one per troops if mountain jungle or one per cube in Nairobi. Remove bases only once no gorillas remain and add one political will for each base removed. Okay, so remember the British can do this in as many places as they want because it doesn't cost them any resources. So they're going to actually do the reprisal first, which I didn't read. So reprisal is going to reduce resistance and displace gorillas, right? So it goes with a sweep or an assault. In this case, it's going with an assault. So populated spaces with British troops 
up to the number indicated on the pipeline track. So this is one. Max one space is what it says. Add a terror marker to the selected space if none and shift the space once toward neutral. Move one gorilla from there to an adjacent space. So they're going to bump somebody. They're going to put some terror in here. And they're going to shift it from resist to neutral. Okay, so... We are going to do, uh, we're going to move, we're going to do it in Nairi. So we're going to place a terror marker in Nairi. We're going to remove this guy. And we're going to bump the active gorilla from Nairi to Mount Kenya. So he's going to go over here. So that doesn't change control because the British still have four cubes here and they only have three. So, um... What that does do, though, is it gives the British control of, um, well, we do have to do an outrage roll. So let's do that. We'll use the blue die. Again, if we roll a one, we rolled a three, but in the book it says you rolled a five. So same, same thing, basically. It's not lower, so there's no outrage. The political will does not move. They've gotten away with their abusive behavior, as it says in the rule book, for now. Um, and they get British control here in Nairi, as I mentioned. And now they will do their assault. So they can do that in any number of spaces, removing one active Mau Mau per troop in the province, one per two troops in the mountains, and one per cube in Nairobi. So they're going to remove one active gorilla from Abadares. They're going to remove two from Mount Kenya. And one from Nairobi. So you flip them to uh, to active, and then you can uh, you can remove them basically. So that's kind of a kind of a core element of the coin games as well. Okay, so the Mau Mau can now do something, and I, as I mentioned, they're not they would not really be interested in doing this event. So they're going to actually do a limited op. And what they're going to do is a limited march operation. So here's march, which lets them move gorillas to any destination space. One resource per destination. They currently have two resource points left. Move gorillas into adjacent destination spaces if the destination is a populated non-reserve space or loyal reserve space. And if gorillas moving from one origin plus cubes in that destination exceed three, activate those moving gorillas. So basically you could sneak uh, if, as long as it's not too blatant or the British don't have a big presence there. If either of those is true, you're kind of busted and you become activated. So they're going to select Nan Yuki right here as their, um, as their tar destination, rather. So they're going to pay one resource to go down to one. And they're going to move uh, one from Thompson's Falls and one from Nairi. So they're going to move this guy in here, and they're going to move this guy in here. That's going to make this British control. This is going to flip to Mau Mau control. Okay, so nobody gets activated because they didn't meet the threshold. Nanyuki is populated. So that actually was a net loss of one for the British in terms of the uh, losing control here. So that ends this turn and we reset and the Mau Mau will now be first eligible and the British second eligible. Surrender Schemes is our next card. Green Branch Program. Remove one gorilla, each from up to two spaces with gorillas and troops. The Mau Mau get distrust and reject. Mau Mau free rally in two spaces. Okay. So the Mau Mau are going to decide to take advantage of their new capability that they got over here. And they're going to do the raid special activity with a terror operation. So they raid first. Okay, so here's raid. They're going to move gorillas and act with them, accompanying op any, as I said. They can do any of these with any of these. One province adjacent to a mountain jungle, so it has to be something that's touching Mount Kenya or Abadares. Either move one or two gorillas from an adjacent mountain jungle into the space and perform a free limited operation there, or move any gorillas from the space to an adjacent mountain jungle and flip them underground. So because of the card, they can select two spaces instead of one. So they're going to select Nanyuki and Rift Valley. So here and here, they're going to remove these two guys and put a base. 
They're going to perform Terror in Rift Valley to activate... Oh, they, I forgot. They had to move. So this guy's going to move here. And this guy's going to move here. So the rally was here. They replaced their base. And then in Nanyuki, or rather Rift Valley, they're going to activate the gorilla and remove the police cube with a terror. So that's what the terror does. And they go in here in the um, available forces. That's going to actually flip Rift Valley. And they put a terror there. And that moves them down to 10. And so they're going to move this down now to 1. And they're going to perform terror in Nairobi. So we're going to perform terror in Nairobi. We're going to activate a gorilla here to place that one terror. And we're going to shift this to resist. And so now that they're out of resources, they can't do anything else. So now the British will perform a limited, well, they did that. The British are going to do a limited op. So they are going to do a relocate operation in Nairi. Relocate may select one. Here, relocate may select one population. Um, it may select one populated reserve province with British control or two at pipeline four. So... We're only at pop pipeline one, so we remove population and add police to available. We can do it in a British controlled populated reserve province up to the number indicated on the pipeline track, which is currently one. May select spaces up to the number indicated on the pipeline track and each space lower the population value by one and move one police from out of play to available. And then remove any loyalty or resistance marker if the population is reduced to, to zero. So they're going to do that in Nairi. So by doing that in Nairi, this becomes a one population province and they get to put a police to available from the out of play box. Then we roll again for outrage and it says this time they roll a one. So that's going to lower their political will by one. And they are now down to a nine. Then we reset them to first and the Mau Mau to second. Pick our card. Pseudo gangs, former gorilla trackers, and mountain jungles sweep activates one gorilla per cube and removes one gorilla. And for the we got a British capability, additional training, British deploy places cubes or moves troops, but not both. Okay, so the British get to go first, and they are going to do a deploy special activity with a reward op. So they're going to move that there. So they're going to do the deploy. They're going to do a deploy and a reward. So it's act, that's actually backwards in the book. The deploy is the op and the reward is the special, act, special activity. So they're first going to deploy in Nairobi, which they can always deploy to even without British control. So they're going to place their two police in here, which bumps them up to five. And that's going to restore British control and give them two. Political will, so they're back to 11. Then they're going to deploy in Nairi, which has British control, and they have no more cubes to place, but they can choose to remove cubes from elsewhere on the map and place them here, and they remove the one police cube in Nanyuki in order to place it in Nairi. So we're going to take our cube in Nanyuki, which we don't control, and place it in Nairi. Then move the two troops in Nairi to Fort Hall, which will be these two. Down here, that's going to flip this to British control. And that's going to move them up to 13. And now finally, they reward, which can select any one populated space with British control. So they control Nairobi, they select Nairobi, remove the terror, and shift this to shift this one space, which makes it uh, neutral. So they just remove the, remove the marker. And so the Mau Mau now have no resources and they are not interested in taking this event because it's a British capability. So they're going to pass and gain a resource. So we'll just put them here on limited op. We'll say they pass, they take one resource point and we reset for the next card, which is the propaganda card. So we're going to see the propaganda round again and this will be the Kenya version of it. 
So here's our propaganda card, political will. We can adjust political will by the net of the following. And again, they want you to, or su strongly suggest that you calculate everything first, then move the political will on the track. Okay, so we're going to subtract total resistance population from the total loyal population, then reduce political will by the total if negative, but do not increase if it's positive. And then if the settlers are intimidated, which we determine by lowering political will by one for each populated non-reserved space with a terror marker, Mau Mau contained, increase political will by two if there are no Mau Mau pieces in Nairobi, increase political will by two if there are no bases outside of mountain jungles, uh, victory, if either player meet, has met their automatic victory condition, then the game ends, right? Which is not the case. This is also not the final propaganda card. And then we do resources and support and redeploy and reset, all that stuff. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is political will. The political will is going to take a net loss of six because there is six population with resistance. We have two here, two here. That's four, five, six. So there's your six. So you're going to take a minus six there. Okay, so they go to seven. So if this had moved it down to two or lower or 18 or higher, we would have an automatic victory, which is not the case. Now resources, the Mau Mau gain one resource for each base on the map. In, in this case, they have four, one, two, three, four. So they're going to have five resources. Support, the British may now reward and choose to do so in Nairobi. Shift the space to loyal. So they have loyal now. Mau Mau may then oath, but they're not able to do so because they don't have any underground guerrillas in the reserve provinces. That would be these guys here. And then we go to redeploy. The British must move all troops from mountain jungles to British-controlled provinces or Nairobi. They have eight total troops in the mountain jungle. They're going to move two to Fort Hall. They're going to move two to Thompson's Falls. They're going to move two to uh, Thika and to, to Nairi. They can then move any police to British controlled provinces or Nairobi, but they do not choose to do any. The Mau Mau may then free rally in each mountain jungle and place a gorilla in each. So they will do one here and one here. Remove all our terror markers, flip all the gorillas underground. The British can now freely shift the pipeline track. They will elect to move to the prison system, which will let them do reprisals in two spaces and relocate in one. And then we would move on to the next card. Uh, obviously, we don't have any additional cards left. So this, this would end the play example. So you've now seen how a full campaign in... Kenya works. Hopefully uh, you found that, um, you know, educational, if not enjoyable, if, or maybe even both. Um, so that will do it for this one. I will do one on Cyprus probably pretty soon. Um, so look forward to that if you're interested in seeing the fourth game. Obviously you can play these in any order you want. If you play the campaign option, which I have not been doing, but if you do do that, you would play them in chronological order, so you would do it in the order in which I've done the videos. You would do Palestine, Malaya, Kenya, then Cyprus, because that's kind of chronologically the, the order. I mean, there's overlap between them, but that's pretty much the order in which these all kind of came about. So that's going to do it. Thank you, as always, for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you did get something out of it and uh, that you would consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing to the channel. That would be awesome if you're willing to do that. Uh, but even if not, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, got something out of it, and um, it'll help you determine if maybe this game is for you or not. But uh, yeah, either way, that is the end of this video, so I am going to sign off. My name is Joe. This is the Hexed Encountered channel, and until next time, happy gaming.